Okay, ladies and gentlemen, here's what's going on. We have a cubic inequality, and it's currently written in this form. x cubed plus 3x squared minus 9x is less than or equal to 27. The first thing I did is I subtracted 27 from both sides because if we're going to solve this graphically like we have any other higher order inequality, higher order meaning quadratic, cubic, any inequality with degree 2 or higher, I'm going to want this side to be 0 and this side to represent y in my graphing calculator. So this is actually my function. And of course the reason I need this to be 0 is so that I can tell what quadrant I'm looking for for y, whether it's quadrant 1 or 2 or whether it's quadrants 3 or 4. So what I'm going to do here is once I have it in the correct form, and by that I mean this is less than or equal to zero, it's very important you have zero established, I'm going to type in that function. So I'm going to go to my graphing calculator and I'm going to type in, as I'm talking, I'm typing in x cubed plus 3x squared minus 9x minus 27. Okay? That's what I've typed into my graphing calculator, and I'm going to hit graph. All right, and what I can see is this. The zeros of my function are, let's see, negative 3 and positive 3. Negative 3 and positive 3 are the zeros of this function. And I'm going to kind of copy the graph that I can at least see from the calculator. Okay, it kind of comes up here, it comes up here to a little peak, then it goes down, and I have no idea how far down it goes. I don't really care. I mean, I could actually figure it out, but that's not important. It's it's below the x-axis. And then it spins back up, crosses three and continues on up. Okay? So that is a good enough picture of my graph right now to, to be able to answer my question. I want to know alright, I want to know where this function is less than or equal to zero. Well, if my y value is less than 0, that means I'm down in quadrants 3 or 4. So I'm shading in everything in these quadrants. Okay, you see that? Color, color, color. My paper's moving, but you get the idea. And of course, I'm going to include the zeros because they're part of the answer. Now, when I scan along the x-axis to get my answers. Look where I'm scanning from. I'm coming from negative infinity, right? I'm coming from this direction because this not only goes, you know, this arrow not only tells me down, but it tells me it's going to the left. So I'm coming from negative infinity. I scan everything all the way until 3. From negative infinity to 3. Bingo! And there's my choice. So again, the key to, this, to, to these kind of problems that we've done in this section, locate the zeros, shade the correct areas based on whether it's less than zero or greater than zero, and then read your answer from your graph. And to decide whether or not the zeros are included, it depends on whether there was an equal in the original problem or not, in the original inequality. And we're done.